Okay, so in this lesson I'm just going to go through a few things that we're going to do with this character, so what you can expect to learn from this series. A few extra bits we might include, and just a bit of how we're going to start to set up this character. So you can see here, this is sort of like a cartoony snail character. So the idea of this tutorial is to get as many sort of cartoon based rigging in there. So we'll have a lot of stretchy limbs, so squash and stretch on the arms, switching between IK and FK for easy animation. He's got quite a complex body shape, so he's got sort of an upper spine and then instead of legs he's just got this tail. So we're going to tackle that by putting either two spines in there and see how that works together. And again with these tentacles for his eyes we can get a lot of squash and stretch in here so we can see what's going to go on there how that's going to work and there's a few other things so if we look out throughout this character and the best thing to do when you actually start rigging a character or if you were doing some sort of animation in a group you would ideally have some sort of storyboard some sort of idea that this character is going to be used for so if I knew this character was going to get run over by a truck in a cartoony way I'd know that I'd have to have some sort of rigging in there some sort of method of allowing him to squash and stretch and get get completely flattened but that might take quite a lot of time to put in and if that was never going to happen in the animation then there'd be no need so say like the cartoon, classic cartoony thing where the eyes pop out the head if that was never going to happen in the animation then there'd be no point rigging it so the best thing to do is think about what your character is what the story is, what the storyboard is and what things you actually want to rig so for this tutorial I haven't actually got a storyboard because this is just a character to go through I have used this character before in a previous a few years ago for a facial animation so I'll, I'll be starting from scratch re-rigging this and even though I haven't got a sort of storyboard in there I've got a few things I want to add to the rig so we're going to go through some facial animation some squash and stretch on the limbs squash and stretch on different parts of the body so like the antennas and if I just pull these eyes out here you can see in here usually when modeling a character if the eyes aren't going to pop out I'd usually stop around this edge loop here because it's behind the eye you're never going to see this mess here so it's just going to waste time skinning that if it's going to sort of clip through this mesh if it's never going to be seen there's no point modeling it but in this case what I want to do is have that classic cartoony part where his eyes can pop out so we're going to add that in the rig so bearing that in mind I've added some backs to these eyes here so this is again as you're modeling you want to look at your storyboard see what's going to happen so if I got to the end of modeling got the end of rigging skinned this and all of a sudden there's a shot where his eyes have to pop out and th there isn't a back side to this eye there are ways you can fix that but in hindsight it would be a lot better if you started off with that model in there you went through the rig and rigged that in there so when you start animating it's all there to just go ahead and work with so um, so for that we just added back to the eyes and also added some sort of like a simple texture on the back of here back of the eyes so we've also added a mouth in here and the actual mouth geometry inside which is a part of this whole skin so I know I'm gonna have this some sort of facial animation, some sort of facial rig on here so again the same with the eyes, I've gone ahead and added in that mouth, that in inside of the mouth so when it comes to animating the mouth you're not going to see the inside of this mesh, you're actually going to see his mouth in there um, a few other points to mention is so on these objects here so I'll just click to open up the outliner on the preset so you can go windows outliner and in here just to mention I've renamed everything with a naming convention so it's mesh underscore L or R or left blank if it's in the middle and what it is is the I let's say rename that all one oh. Oh yeah, and um, one thing to mention here when we say left and right I'm meaning left and right to the character so this is my grid looking forward so we can show the grid and it's been modeled down the center so I'd be looking at him and this is be his left to me but when we're rigging the character so when we're animating the character and rigging we want to know that actually we're going from the character's perspective so this is his left eye on this side here so we've called this left 
um, this one on this side is his right eye. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that with an R. And the reason we have the the left and the right is there's a lot of tools in Maya will will take that into account. So if we use if we mirror things across, so like when we add joints to this character, if it's got left and right, Maya can look on the other side of the grid and look for the opposite L or R. So that way we can speed up quite a lot of processes. So just by knowing that at the start we can start to name these properly to save ourselves a lot of time in the future. So other things to check with your character is first select the different elements and just check in the outliner down here. So um the attribute editor, sorry, or channel editor even. Um and just check if there's any history in here. So as these characters have been modelled, might have split balcon tools, different things going on in there. We don't need these for rigging. If we have them in there, it can cause Maya to crash, it can cause it to lag, or cause some completely unrealistic or undesirable results. So anything in there, we just want to go to Edit, Delete by Type and History. So Delete by Type and History just deletes what you've got selected. So the history on the selected object. So if I know in this scene I'm starting the rigging, and I want everything gone, I can just go edit, delete all by type history. Now this is the only time I will be doing this because delete all by type and history deletes the history on every single object inside the scene which is good when you're starting out but as we start to skin this character if you delete history it deletes the skin, if we add blend shapes it deletes blend shapes so you quickly get into a few scenarios where you start losing deformers start losing thick parts of the rig that you've already spent a lot of time in so I'll do this once at the start, delete all by type history so I know that everything's clean in here, I can go through and just double check these and then any time in the future if I'm making controls and I want to delete history I'll go edit and just delete by type so it's just on the selected object so it doesn't affect any other part of the rig now there are parts like delete non-deformer history which means it'll go through the scene, it'll look for things like skin clusters uh, blend shapes, all those sort of deformers that are history but we do want to keep them and it'll try and delete the model in history and any other histories that in there but it's it's way, it's it, it, it's much more of an advantage to just start off with a clean scene and start and just clean it up all the way through because sometimes that become, can, can be quite buggy in a way that if you've got modeling tools that have got split polygon tool in here that's from an earlier stage of modeling and I delete non-deformer history, it can still cause quite a few errors or it can actually just crash Maya and it won't be able to figure out how to delete that history. So this is like one of the golden rules that you've always always checked the history's gone. So other things we can do in here is we can press 1 and 3 and you can see down here in the feedback that it's turning the smoothness on and off so it's a smooth mesh preview and the reason I'm doing this on the model is sometimes when you mirror a character across if you haven't got vertices merged in the center or you've got things like uh, duplicated edges or faces on top of each other just pre pressing the smooth preview if there's errors in the mesh the smoothing algorithm will cause it to look a bit odd so if I had two faces here and I press smooth we would see some sort of thing going on here so just to show an example, if I've got a cube here and I press 3, you can see that smooths quite nicely and that's what we'd expect. But if, for instance, um, I extruded this face, so at some point in the modeling we've extruded a face but something went wrong, we didn't use that face but it's still been left there, and you can see the history there. If we press 3, you can see all of a sudden how that shape has changed. So just by pressing 3, even though we don't want to smooth the mesh, we can just visually see that, hang on a minute, something's going wrong there. I can tell that that obviously means there's a duplicate face there or some vertices going on there. So it's just a way of diagnosing things quite quickly. So all I tend to do is just press free on some parts of the mesh and just have a look about, see if there's any areas that are have a few holes, any areas that aren't working properly. And because again, if you try to just uh, try to fix these later on after this has been skinned you'd be adding in history again like delete faces splitting polygon tools after the skin 
and that's bad practice and that means Maya's going to have to calculate that every frame after the skin so we don't want to do any modeling after this and this is another point where you want to have a signing off phase which is basically you want to get to a point where you say the modeling's done I'm going to move on to rigging and animation and not go back to the modeling so you need to sign off and have a definite date or a time that you want to say this model's complete I don't want to go back and model it now in practice you will always probably you might have something you want to go back to and you can always there's always ways around it but it's always a good idea to just sign off each phase and get things finished and another major thing with the modeling is if we just go to windows and UV texture there and we'll bring this up here now you'll really want to texture your character so set up the UVs before you start rigging and this is again because if you rig this character skin it you'd have to start performing all unwrapping techniques which again racks up a lot of history so always unwrap your character before and even if you're doing some sort of different type of it's like you don't need the UVs you're not texturing it or you're projecting the textures on or you're just using uh, blank shaders and you don't want to texture it it's always a good idea to just if it's quite simple character like if you've got um, a decent experience with UV and this wouldn't take too long to unwrap so even if you're not going to apply any textures it's a good idea to just just get some UVs in there just in case in the future you do want to add some textures in then all of a sudden you can just add a different texture you wouldn't have to go in um, re-UV this and then reapply it to the rig it's just a lot easier to get it out of the way at the start so if I select all these meshes here you can see these are all on one UV sort of tile and you can click this image up here to display image on and off so I just want to hide the texture and I've laid these out in sort of a decent way just so I can get the texture in there and you can see I've actually got texture in here so you can see it in the viewport it might not be the finished texture but as long as I've got the UVs in there the texture is external I can edit that in Photoshop afterwards and just come back in so that's all sorted uh, the next one here the shell we can see it's just a grid and if we actually look in here you can see there's a visual difference that this is sort of a grid with triangles and this is sort of a surface so this is just telling us that this is a NURB surface so NURB surfaces are usually a bit difficult to deal with in the UV texture editor. and the reason I've chosen NURB surface for this is because it's quite a smooth shape and also I can use some of the material presets in so just some of the material 2D textures to get some sort of like different effect on this so we can see here that the colour turning around here is actually just a ramp shader there's no actual texture information in there no like external textures it's just Maya textures so that's the reason I chose that for that shell okay so I'm just gonna um, stop the video here and in the next video I'm just gonna go through a few more things how to check this model and how we're gonna start getting this scene ready for rigging this character